sorts of stuff. Um, the easiest way to do a smart material is just to uh, make a folder at the top and then grab all the, everything in here. This shift drag, you could probably do control A, but you can just select the top node and then go all the way down in your stack and shift click and then it'll drag everything into this folder. We'll, we'll name this folder um, ro uh, Rusty Robot. So now if I want to make a Rusty Robot using the same materials, um, I, this will all be set up. Now, of course, I'm probably not going to be able to use my painted stuff on here, so and my color selection will be different because I just randomly assign colors in ZBrush. Huh, uh, let's see. Just to be, I don't think I know how to export from ZBrush correctly. I tried to paint 2K, so look wacky resolution-wise, you'd be correctly. Hey, Thunder Bunny. Um, hello, Mr. Brunk. Well, let's, I'm going to do that tonight, actually. So we'll, I'll go through the process. And uh, if anything looks weird or different, let me know. I'll see if we get you up and running. Because we're going to do a sep slightly different robot using these textures. Uh, but of course, anything I've painted on, like my weld, um, it's not going to show up. Now, if I had done this on a weld fill layer and then used an alpha uh, to bring that up, it would, which I probably should do anyway. But I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And then my roughness breakup, I can keep. My oil, I can keep. But I'm just going to right-click this mask and do um, add a black mask. Because again, if I'm just applying this to another robot, I'm going to be painting those oil spots in uh, different places. Cool. Well, thanks for showing up, MalkyOr11. Uh, thanks for the kind words. I my work's all right. <laughs> like I try and get better, a little bit better every single day, uh, still. So uh, yeah, good luck, and uh, hopefully this this will be worthwhile. Um, yeah, my Pixelogic stream time that's really early, even for me uh, in Austin. It was I think I start at 6 a.m., so it's 4 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, it just works out better. It's nice to kind of get that kind of stuff out of the way. I'm contemplating moving this one to an earlier time, but I'm, it's Europe friendly. I know in the UK it's like noon, um, but here not so much. If you're in California, you're kind of hosed unless you're either a really late night person or a really super early morning person. Um, but, you know, worst case scenario, you can always pick it up on the, uh, on the live stream. Or I'm sorry, on the video on demand. Uh, dirt, we can go ahead and keep. Skull, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of. I can change this to like paint a decal. And then in here, go ahead and um, let's call this paint a decal all. Because even if I am going to use stuff that is painted, I can just go through here and just add a black mask. And add a black mask. And then later on, I can come and fill these in with something else. So I'll call this paint. Uh, text, I can go ahead and kill, I suppose. Decal lines I can kill. Decals I can kill. And the decal stuff was like this little sign back here. So you know what? I'll keep this decal and uh, we'll just go add a black mask and all that'll just be set up as a layer. And if anything, just to remind me, hey, you should probably paint decals because uh, Lord knows I'm not the smartest person. Turn off visor fill. We'll keep the rust around. We'll keep the rusty steel around. Now, this color selection isn't going to be applicable. Like, if I was using color swatches... Actually, let me show you that in ZBrush. So, sometimes when I'm feeling really fancy, I will uh, go into my comma key, my tool, and you're going to see I have a sim sample color swatches over here, and I will drag that out, and I will put that... Let's select a flat color material here, and I'll stick this over to the side, and then I'll do uh, shift S to save a snapshot. And then I'll go back to just modeling as per usual. And then if I want to, say I want to color code this thing, I'll just control shift drag this thing here. And I can just hit C, the C key to kind of sample through these colors. And all these colors are, if I open up the color menu over here, it's just cycling through like 255, 0, 0. 255, 0, 255. 0, 0, 2, 5. So just as far as they can be apart mathematically to make them nice, clean, easy masks for painter. Uh, so what I can do is just fill that with my hotkey, control alt f If you don't have a hotkey for that, that's just color, fill object. Um, and then, of course, I can grab some of these and then sample another color and fill that. And I usually use that for subtools, but long story short. 
Um, yes, so Twitch does save these streams. However, it might, I have them a little more organized on my YouTube channel. Let me send you a link real quick. If you go to my YouTube channel and you go to my playlist, there's a twitch.tv playlist. And what I do is I'll just go section by section because I usually talk about one thing at once and then I'll switch to another topic unless I, sometimes I lose my mind, but that's pretty much generally how I go. But if you go here, you can uh, go through my live stream and go piece by piece all the way back to episode one. And then after that, I kind of start breaking it up into like organized chunks that are named hopefully good. Um, yeah, so check those out. And the VOD should stay up on my live stream as long as I save a highlight. They won't keep my big videos forever, but the highlight should stay around forever. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thanks for showing up, Grizzly Bear. And uh, oh my God, 3 a.m. Go to bed. <laughs> I'm usually, I'm tired like right now. I'm ready to go to bed. I'm, I'm getting old. Axel's here. <laughs> yay, yay, yay. All right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, for as far as, okay, the question was, um, you're good at using Blender, uh, but no, don't know 3D Studio Max or mine. Do you suggest learning one of these software tools too? Um, I would say... And I'm, I don't mean to be super biased because I certainly don't get evangelical with software choices. Like I know a lot of people, I, I, was, <laughs> I was on a thread today where it was like, Mudbox or Facebook or Mudbox or ZBrush. And I was like, eh, it's a tool is a tool. You know, I use everything. I, absolutely. I use ZBrush a lot because ZBrush is very demo friendly. I can make a lot of really cool stuff really fast. Whereas in some software programs, it's not quite that way. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't use them. Um, as far as like, if you want to pick up an Autodesk product, as far as pipeline tools or making yourself more marketable to game studios everywhere. So I went to Texas State Technical College in Waco to get my associate's degree and we used Kinetics 3D Max R2 or something like a million years ago. Um, then I went to Ringling College and that was all Maya. Then I went to EA Tiburon where I worked on Madden and CAA and um, NFL Street. That was all Maya Pipeline. And then I went to DC Universe Online at Sony Online Entertainment, and that was all Maya. And then I went to Certain Affinity, and we worked on Halo, which was all Maya. We worked on uh, Call of Duty was all Maya. We worked on... And by all Maya, what I mean is the pipeline backbone. The animation goes through that. Most of the build processes go through that. Uh, most of the tools are written for that. You can model in anything, I think, these days. Most companies are like, you want to extrude a face in Blender? Who cares? You want to make a model in ZBrush? Who cares? Now, that's not to say that some companies or some leads have very specific programs you need to use. Uh, but I think, generally speaking, that's been my experience. Is nobody really cares how you make your model. Uh, but when it gets into pipeline stuff and rigging and animation and exporting and... Uh, backbone of your pipeline. Uh, it's been 100% Maya my whole career. That's not to say you should absolutely learn Maya. I'm just saying it is what it is. Um, yeah, and even Max for modeling. Like, I know guys who worked on Avatar that modeled Max and Maya. You know, anything is just a tool. If you, if you want to extrude a face, you can write a script and do fancy stuff. And really any program. Again, I don't get evangelical. In my experience, you know, people who are really good at modeling are just really good at modeling. You can use Bryce 3D if you're really good at Bryce 3D. Um, so yeah, my ba -ba -ba. yeah, and I use again, like I said, I use everything. I use Moto Max Maya, uh, 3D Coat, Marvelous Designer, all the 3D programs, RapX, anything I get my grubby little hands on, I use. Um, and you're kind of missing out if you don't. I would say if you only use one program to model, you're kind of missing out on a lot of cool stuff you could be you could be doing. Uh, so let's see. So, uh, oh yeah, I do have a couple questions here. So let's see. Um, I got this here. Oh yeah, let me load up. I really don't remember where we left off. It seems like I was. Did I miss a week? It seems like it's been a while since I've been here. Um, pad mic mail. Let's go to robots here. Bot, 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 bots. Battlebot Salt. Ernie, I think we were doing. Let's see how Ernie turned out. Maybe we'll get Ernie in the painter and we'll go over that process. Yeah, I think that guy's ready. So, uh...
Yeah, I mean, it depends on the studio. It depends on the place. Like I said, my whole career, it's all been Maya-centric. That hasn't been to say that the only Maya has been the only modeler, but Maya has certainly been the only backline, back, backbone uh, pipeline thing. I want to learn Blender. I've been meaning to. And Houdini is another thing I've been meaning to sit down and get deep into. I kind of went through it a little bit, but I need to really sit down with the new Houdini 16 and get fired on that. Um, anyways, we were making a smart material before I got uh, sidetracked <laughs> by myself with this ID mask thing. So, uh, so painted metal rusty steel because in ZBrush... I wasn't going through and assigning my materials and my colors really nicely. If you were and you were consistent, like I'm always going to assign our metal dark blue. I'm always going to assign little knuckle metal light blue. If you're doing that, then you can go ahead and leave these colors right here for all of your masks and it'll plug right in. Uh, because I'm lazy and I'm not doing that, I'm going to go ahead and just kill all these and then Rusty still won't show up anything. I can leave the color selection in there just because I know I'm going to need it. Um, but we got that. We got weapon metal, which is again going to a color selection. We'll just kill all that. And then this fill layer. I don't even know what that is. That's something. I guess I'll leave that. So, okay. So here's my rusty robot. Uh, it looks pretty dingy right now, and it's not very uh, broken up because, again, I just got black mask with a color selection with nothing picked uh, for my breakup here. So I'm just going to right click this, and we're going to go to create smart material here. And that'll go ahead and save a rusty robot smart material that's going to be ready for us when we drop a new robot in. So let's